until uh, okay <clears throat> we're in chapter seven you're all familiar with but don't understand what it says that there were two trees in the garden of Eden. One was a tree of life. The other was a tree of knowledge of good and evil. And Adam and Chava were instructed not to eat the fruit of the tree of good and evil. Knowledge of good and evil. And they were tricked. They were fooled. By the primal, primeval snake and ate the fruit and gave it to all the animals to also eat from it. What this explains is <clears throat> that everything in the world that is permissible to us has a mixture in it of good and evil. Okay, now you may not understand this. Why should you understand it? It's beyond understanding. But the fact remains that that's the way it is. There's a mixture of good and evil in everything. It says in Hayyem Yem in the name of the Baal Shem Tov, The good in each thing is the life-giving energy that we can get from it. And the bad in the thing, the evil that's in the thing is pure material, materialism, materialistic, the, the physical substance of the thing it is not good, does not have good in it. Then of course, there are things that are totally bad. There are things that Hashem creates that are totally bad. They are there for us to choose not to have anything to do with them. And there are things in the world that are totally good, like Torah and mitzvahs, angels, okay, with that, those words of introduction, we plunge into chapter seven. <clears throat> which is all about Klippus Noga, which is the source of life of all these in-between things that are not bad per se, in and for themselves, but they're not good. And we have to use them for good to extract the goodness that's in them and use it in a holy way. And if we keep that in mind, then we can understand what this is all about. Um, and, and this activity on our part is called the service of separating out the good from the bad. In Hebrew it's called avodas habirurim. Birur. Birur means to clarify and to separate in, in the labors of the Sabbath. Borer means to separate good things from bad things. So we learned yesterday <clears throat> that Klippus Noga is the life source. In the world of Klippus, there are four levels. <clears throat> Three levels are totally bad. You know, if you go swimming from Mexico, from uh, Cuba to Florida, you encounter on the way, I am told, so I learned, with jellyfish, with poisonous tentacles. They are murder, they're murder. If you run into a school of these jellyfish floating around, you get enwrapped in their tentacles, they're poisonous, and many people drown. Well, not many people swim there, but it's very arduous. 
Where do these jellyfish get their life from? Impure clippers, the three impure levels of clipper. How about lions and tigers and monkeys and apes? Non-kosher birds all get their life from non from the three impure clippers. The clippers noiga we learned yesterday is a source of life of went through four levels. And the human level is the source of life of your animal soul, your vital human energy. <clears throat> On the animal level, it's the source of life of kosher animals. We said there are 10 kosher animals. Again, this is amazing that there are 10 in the whole world, there are 10 kosher animals and never discovered in 11. <clears throat> These are seven wild animals and three domestic animals, sort of like your three intellectual powers and your seven emotional powers. <clears throat> And, and the domestic animals, these are the animals that we eat. Sheep, that's little lambs, lamb chops, beef, steak, goat's meat, goat's milk. These are the dom three domestic animals, all of which can be brought to the Holy Temple as an offering to atone for our, our mistakes or to express our thanksgiving to Hashem. In the vegetable world, everything pretty much is kosher, mm -hmm. yosher, except for two exceptions that the Tanya speaks about, <clears throat> which are exceptions from the Torah, which is mixtures, a forbidden mixture of grapes on the vine and wheat. Or other mixtures, for instance, if you're planting seeds in your garden, if any of you have ever had a, ever had a vegetable garden, so you have a one row of peas and one row of carrots, they have to be separate. If you're going to put the seeds for the carrots and the peas in one handful and throw them down on the the earth of your garden, that's going to be a forbidden mixture. Tar doesn't want mixtures <clears throat> because, and the reason there's a reason for the reason for this. The ultimate reason we don't understand, but the reason is that each thing in life gets its, <clears throat> gets its life from a different source. So we don't want to mix up the different sources of life. Like milk has a source and meat has a source. Flax has a source <clears throat> from which comes linen. Wool has a source which comes from sheep. We don't want to mix the vegetable fibers of the flax with the, <clears throat> which stand, which have to do with gavura. Anybody who makes linen knows it's a, a very difficult process. And, and that's why flax is very tough and fibrous. And sheep are very soft. The wool is soft and warm. We don't want to mix the animal wool with the veg, vegetable source of which is flax <clears throat> so the torah is opposed to mixtures and that's one of the forbidden things on the vegetable level and together with that also forbidden in vegetable level is fruits in the first three years <clears throat> as i said yesterday farmers have told me that the fruits of the first three years are not good anyway we have to let the tree grow up before we can benefit from it. Okay, that's in the vegetable. So we've dealt with animal, human, animal, and vegetable. Now what about us? In our lives, Clippus Noga is the source of all the activities that we do that are neither good nor bad. Every day, day to day, -to -day activities. <clears throat> if they're done properly, Alpitora, then they're good, like doing business, according to the lo lots of Torah in business. Some people look down on business, they want to lead a holy life, they want to stay away from business. Business is full of <clears throat> corruption and cheating and negative things. No, it doesn't have to be. 
It's a mistake to think so. Business can be extremely honorable and holy, and the end of business can be for holy things. It doesn't have to be the business is selfish, and then on the side you have your religious life. Business can be religious and should be so. But the day to day things like exercise, shopping, bookkeeping, you know, household finances. Etiquette. I had to look up the other day. Well, the other day was a few years ago. Setting the table. Where do you put the forks? You have a big fork, a small fork. Where do they go? The big fork goes on the inside. You can use it for the main course. The little fork for the fish goes on the outside. I looked it up. That's what it says in the book, uh, the Google's book of etiquette. That's how you set the table. That's Clippus Noga. It's not good. It's not bad. <clears throat> so all the things that we do that don't have any stain of a transgression about them. They come, the life source of these activities is Klippus Noga. <clears throat> we just do it that way because we like to do it. I like to take a walk. The doctor says you should do it such and such. It's good for your health. Okay, Klippus Noga. How do you get out of Klippus Noga? <coughs> Sarah, how do you get out of Klippus Noga? You have to have intention. You have to think, I'm doing this in order to serve Hashem. I'm having this cup of coffee. I'm going to say a blessing on it. I'm going to get the energy to serve Hashem. <laughs> It's actually water. But I have a canker sore in my mouth. And it hurts me to talk. <laughs> so as long as there's no source, no negative commandments involved that we're transgressing when we do our day-to-day -day activities, then that's pure klippa stoga. But it's klippa. It's klippa. It's self-centered. And even, it's for, even if it's doctor's orders, we're doing it for our health, it's still Klippus Noga, as long as we're not doing it with the idea that I'm doing this in order to be able to serve Hashem. I'm earning my salary in order to be able to pay tuition for my children. They should have a Torah education. In order I should have money to give tzedakah <clears throat> and to buy all the items our family needs that are kosher items, which is more expensive. You know, I once had a student from Brazil. Anybody from Brazil, raise your hand. Nobody here from Brazil today. Where's Leah Rappaport? Leah Brinstein, where are you? Brazil, where's your Brazils? Where the nuts come from? Anyway, she was from Brazil. She had different. Oh, there's the. Oh, you're both on Zoom. Okay, good. So this young lady, you may, you may even know who she is. <clears throat> she had a rough journey towards Yiddishkeit. She was in my class for two years. She was much closer with Mrs. Pape than with myself. And she told me this story that <clears throat> she took upon herself to eat kosher food. And she went to the store in Brazil, in Paulo. Kosher meat is more expensive <clears throat> than the regular meat. And why is this good? Why is so good? <clears throat> now it says when a Jew undertakes to keep Torah and mitzvahs, even the world will help him. One day she went to the supermarket. She decided enough is enough. I'm not, I can't afford to keep kosher. And it's not that important to me. And she goes into the supermarket and she buys meat. And the, the butcher behind the counter says, Miss, don't you take kosher meat? <laughs> and she was so embarrassed. She's, oh, yeah, I must have made this mistake. So, 
You see, so I said, so as long as there's no hint, no connection with a negative mitzvah or even a, a derivative of a negative mitzvah, it's from Klippus Neugo. You need to have not just neutral activities, you need to have a holy intention in order to bring this, uh, elevate this activity and bring it under, let's say, and metaphorically under the wings of the Shrina. Shrina being the presence, what we call in English, and a funny word in English, the indwelling, the presence of Hashem. That the Shrina is the presence of Hashem which dwells upon anybody doing a mitzvah for the right reason. Okay? <clears throat> like on page 114 to review, instead of just doing things because that's because you want, or, or that's what you really like, I really, really like strawberries, raspberries, whatever, I must have them. I must have blueberries with my cereal. If you don't stick, put this spin on it, that's all it is. It's a spin, a godly spin, a, 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 an intention. I'm doing this for the sake of Hashem, to be connected with Hashem, to be part of Hashem's holy system. I want to be on Hashem's team. You know, in business, they have all kinds of teams now, even in, in giving charity. You give charity online, they ask you, what team do you want to be on? Uh, what team? I don't know, teams, shmims. No, you have to choose a team. Well, I want to be on Hashem's team, so therefore, I'm. That's my kavana. That's my intention. So, on bottom page one fourteen. If this intention is missing, then all the things that you do, all the things you say, all the things that you think, are just pure animal soul. So, what's the difference between you and the animal? Why are you not an animal? A person came to the Tzemach Tzedek once. And he said, I learned, I heard that if you don't say Lush and Hara for 40 days, <clears throat> Elijah the prophet is going to appear to you and you will have divine prophecy. You have Ruach HaKadosh. You have holy understanding. And I didn't say Lush and Hara for 40 days and Elijah didn't come. So the Tzemach Tzedek said to him, you see this window? He said, yeah. He says, what do you see out the window? He says, I see a horse grazing in a field. He says, guess what? That horse didn't say Lush and Hara for the last 40 days either. So what's the difference between us and the animal? We're just doing things that we like, and the animal is just eating grass because that's what it likes. Page 115. Now comes an explanation according to Hasidus. Hakol, Kasher, Lakol, everything, all the life energy that comes into us <coughs> is flowing into us. It's coming to us from a source. And all these everyday activities without a godly intention, the source is from the second level of Klippa, Bimadregas Hashenis, the second level of Klippa. <coughs> And Sitra Ahra, the other side, the other side, the side of holiness, and the other side, right? Not this side, not the holy side, the other side. It's coming to us from the other side, which is the side of Klippa, the side of ego and self centeredness. <clears throat> and above it is the fourth level of called Klippus Noga. That's the source of all the neutral activities that are not negative and not positive. In this world, he adds this in this world. Why does he add in this world? What other world are we talking about? This world is called the world of action. I see, we learned already that there are four worlds, the world of whole, total holiness connected with Hashem, the world of creation that's uh, now something separate from Hashem, but still very holy. And then there's a, on a much lower level, it's now half and half. Halfway not connected to Hashem. That's the world of forms, a spiritual source of life in this world. And then there's this world in this world where the connection with Hashem is <clears throat> minimal. We don't see godliness. In the world of forms, 
Godliness is perceived. Who lives in the world of forms? Who lived in the world of creation? Angels. Those are that's 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 a level of pure beings that perceive on a greater or a lesser degree what godliness is, and therefore they do things in a godly way. If a person works on himself so much, he could conceivably get to such a high level. <coughs> like says Moshe Rabbeinu behaved like if an ashama came from the world of total connection with God into a human body, it would be Moshe Rabbeinu. That everything he would say would be a godly act, godly word, and everything he would think would be a godly thought, and everything he would do would be a godly word, godly activity. And the great tzaddikim of all time, who are very few in number, very, very few, they would be on the next world down, the world of creation, which is 75% total holiness. So they would never, ever do a transgression never say anything <clears throat> that was not holy. Never think anything that wasn't holy. Just there'd be some vestige we'll learn in the next chapter, some minimal residue of where godliness is hidden. Little, you know, like a cockroach lurking in the corner but afraid to come out. Totally subdued, totally out of the picture. Okay, there will be the world of the great, great Sadiqim and the world of creation. <clears throat> when we get down to the fourth world, the world in which we live, world of act action, activity, this is the only world where it's possible to make a, a choice between good and evil. <laughs> so there has to be a lot of darkness in this world. And we just learned at the end of this last chapter that for life to come into this world, to give life, you know, <clears throat> bacon and eggs, where does the bacon get its life from? Well, it has to be, the life has to be stepped down and stepped down and stepped down and stepped down and stepped down till it's so minimalized that it could give life to Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And so as he's being given life from Hashem in this very minimal form, He's going to cry out and says, who is this God? I never heard of him. He's not in my books. How does he have energy from God to say there's no God? <clears throat> That's what we learned at the end of the last chapter. Now, pursuing this train of thought, we have Klippus Neuge in which there also is Minimal, minimal holy energy, so we don't perceive the godliness. When you go to the supermarket, it's not shining the kosher things that say, buy me, buy me. On the contrary, like Alice in Wonderland, there are all kinds of things that say, drink me, buy me, eat me. All kinds of temptations. I told you once this, I'm not gonna go, you know, the you know the old story about the people they they only had a certain number of jokes and they knew them all. So they gave, just gave them a number. They just say number 17, everybody would laugh. Somebody else, he said number 27. He said number 27, nobody laughed. He said, how come nobody laughed? He says, he doesn't know how to tell the joke. <clears throat> we don't see the holiness shining you know when a thing lights up with our with our toys our electronic toys a thing lights up and says you know touch me i'll stop we don't see we don't see the holiness <clears throat> holy people do holy people there, there are and you read the, the stories of the tzaddikim support tzaddikim <clears throat> all kinds of stories there about righteous tzaddikim they see, they really do see. We'll get, we'll come back to this. We'll tell more stories about this. Not, not at this moment. So 
the good qualities in the permissible areas of life, they come from Klippus Neuge. That's what we're getting out of this. Now let's turn the page to page 116. Where it tells us now something very, very important. Klippus Noga is like an intermediary level. It's an, an, an in-between level. I think uh, there's a book about the Tanya that calls it, Rabbi Miller wrote a book called the, the, the Bay, calls the Bainini, the in-betweener. It's not a tzaddik, but he's not, he's not wicked, he's not, he's not righteous. <clears throat> Klippus Neuge, page 116 at the top. Mumutsas, that means it's an intermediary, a, medium, a middle level, vein, shalish Klippus Atameus, poised between the abyss, on the edge of the abyss of the three totally impure Klippus, <clears throat> and the treasure, which is the world of holiness, the world of, of godliness. This world is called the world of darkness. It says, even though I dwell in darkness, Hashem is my light. Why is this world called the world of darkness? The Friedrich Rebbe brings a medrash, and he says, because when you're standing in the pitch dark, you know, like the dark, plague of darkness in Egypt, you can't see where you are. And in the pitch dark, we don't know what darkness really is because we have street lights. Wherever we go, there's light, artificial light. <clears throat> Spiritually, <clears throat> Klippus Noga is like a world of darkness. And, and if you're standing in the pitch dark, it says, you can't tell if you should be excited or you should be nervous. You could be standing beside a treasure. If you knew you were standing beside a treasure, worth billions and zillions of dollars, gazillions of dollars. You'd be so excited. On the other hand, if you knew you were standing on the edge of a cliff, you could plunge to heaven for a bit. You'd be very nervous. You don't, you'd be too nervous to even take a step. So that's the darkness of this world. We can't know. We're like standing on the edge of a sword. <clears throat> we can't know if we make the wrong move, we're going to plunge into the three impure levels of clipper which are gonna get their clutches upon us or we're gonna get stuck there until the end of time. Or in brackets, I'm gonna say, or until we do big, big time chuba. Or if we're gonna make the right move and the angels are gonna take us up into the world of holiness. That's where we are. <clears throat> that's the muscle of darkness. So therefore this world is called a world of falsehood. Because we can't tell by looking at a thing if it's good or bad. So how do we know if a thing is good or bad? How do we know if it's right or wrong? Where do our morals come from? Where do our values come from? Only one place. There's only one arbiter. There's only one judge of what's right and wrong and what's not, and that's the Torah. That's so important. It sounds so basic, so simple, but it's not. It's very deep. It's a very, very deep idea. <clears throat> and it's the challenge of our life in everything that we do. And it's renewing itself every second, every encounter, every activity. There's going to be a negative voice inside that's going to try and fool you to do it the wrong way. Get out of my face. I don't want to hear from you. Yeah, it's a struggle. Life becomes a tremendous. So when I was a kid, we learned, I remember in grade five, we learned about the explorers. That set my imagination aflame. Marco Polo, Vasco da Gama, <clears throat> staking out Sir Walter Raleigh, Staking out claims for king and country. Wow, so romantic, such a wonderful, exciting way to love, live. Christopher Columbus, <clears throat> was he really Jewish? Um, <clears throat> nowadays, what are the new countries to this? What are the new frontiers of discovery? 
Some people like to climb into the underskirt covered depths of the earth to find their way in underground passages to places where no human foot has ever tread. Some people want to go to outer space. Some people want to go into micro this and micro that, into areas of atomic energy. Our whole life is the life of an explorer because everything we're doing is we are laying claim to this world where godliness is hidden and saying, aha, this is part of God's creation. Blessed are you, Hashem, king of the world who creates everything with your word. This now participates. The water I drink becomes energy to, to learn Torah. And the water becomes involved in a holy activity that it could never do on its own. This is, in essence, what the service of sorting out good from bad is all about. <clears throat> that began with Adam and Chava, Adam and Eve, eating from the fruit that was forbidden. And that cast upon us the burden of this activity. What would have been if they didn't do it? That's a different story. I'm not going to go into it now because it's almost time for the class to be over. Okay. So <clears throat> all the in-between things, they get their life from Klippus Noga. Therefore, continuing on page 116, second Hebrew lines. Lochen, therefore, pa'amim, sometimes, she nichlelis b'sholish klippus atomeus. Sometimes the life energy from klippus noga can get schlepped down into impure realm, realms. Like it's written in, uh, he gives a footnote here from Eitz Chaim. Who wrote Eitz Chaim? You probably don't remember. We spoke about it. Chaim Vital, right? And he gives a footnote, a reference. His reference is all Kabbalah. Why Chaim Vital wrote this in this chapter and in this gate is all reckoned out. Nothing is by accident. And, and this is from the Zohar, the source of all our knowledge of what we call mysticism, the inner side, the holiness between in, in this world. That's the footnote. <clears throat> so sometimes the energy can get schlepped down into impure clippers. Ufamim, and sometimes Shinichlelis is included and goes up into the realms of holiness and is redeemed. It's redeemed. Pure physical life gets redeemed. So the chicken that you hold on Kaparas, you do Kaparas, is very happy that it's going to be. <clears throat> redeeming your transgressions before Rosh Hashanah and it's going to get shechted, it's going to get slaughtered according to the laws of the Torah it's going to be soaked and salted and it's going to end up as chicken soup on your Rosh Hashanah table and you'll drink it and you'll sing Avinu Malkeinu Avinu Atta, you are our father you are our king the Hainu, that is to say we said everything now is a mixture of good and bad. Here we go. That's the timer. Three minutes. Three minute warning. <clears throat> that is to say that everything we said, everything is in this world is a mixture of good and bad together. And by treating it in the right way, we sort out, we extract the good energy from the physical object that, that's in it. And we enable that energy to go up and to be included in the world of holiness. We'll continue from there tomorrow. Thank you very, very much, girls. Is anybody whose name didn't call Chedva? Where are you? Chedva Shagalov is here. Yeah. Who else is here? Hana is here. Uh, Mexico. Yeah. Yes, Chava, where, where are you? Where is your name? 
I'm looking for you. Yeah, I mean, but the names are, got all mixed up. They used to be in alphabetical order, and then more people came, and more people came. Now they're all mixed up. Like Oilam Haza, it's a mixture of names. We're good or not. It's okay. Leah Brinstein is online. Yes. Natalia Goes, is Natalia here? No. Samantha, yes. Karen Elazem. She was here. Yes, sitting there. That was Karen. Liba Rivka Boss is here. And I think that's everybody. Called everybody? Anyway. Karen? No. Who are, what? Tassi? With a, with a T or with a D? With a T. T. Tassi. Okay. With a P? With a T with an E. T with an E. Tessie. Tessie. Yes. Oh, Tess, like Tess of the Durbervilles. Tessie, what's your last name? P O S P O S P E K. Okay, welcome. Thank you. Come again. Okay, that's good. A good way to start. Uh, who, I didn't say Sarah Abigail. Hava. Anybody else I didn't get? No? Okay. Thank you all for being here. You are? Rachel. What? Rachel. 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 Rachel, where are you? Hi, Rachel. What's your last name? O'Connor. O'Connor. Okay. Where are you from, Rachel? Queens. Queens? Yeah. Okay. Where in Queens? Uh, Little Neck. Little Rock. Little Neck. Oh, Little Neck. Yeah. <clears throat> Were you here yesterday? Yeah. Yes. Wednesday? Yes. Okay. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you very much, girls. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you.